Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be yet again another exciting video because we are finally upgrading the quince monitor's enclosure. I've had a quince monitor in this 3 foot by 2 foot by 3 foot enclosure for a couple of months now and at this point I feel like we're getting pretty good with the taming process. He no longer runs away directly from me when I open the enclosure. You know, I'm able to do stuff like calmly scratch his chin, uh, things like this without him getting too much worried. We're still, it's still about like the middle ground. Uh, phase, I guess I would say, um, just because of the fact that although he's not going into that full fear state and just fleeing, uh, he isn't really going into that interest state of mind where he's trying to get some more information about who I am and stuff. You can still see he is in that um, somewhat of a wary state where he's not doing any ton flicks. He kind of just freezes whenever I enter the uh, enclosure. So not the best uh, uh, case where I want him to be, but he's at a good place where I feel like I just like him to upgrade the enclosure, just to give him a little more room. Today we are going to be moving him into a 3 foot by 2 foot by 5 foot, uh, same grow tent, Vivosan. He's not going to stay in a grow tent, I decided I want his final enclosure to be a wooden viv. I got a couple more animals like the tegu and um, this new monitor that we'll talk about later um, that we are going to go into wooden viv. So while this is going to be an upgrade enclosure, it won't be his final enclosure. He will be getting a very large one um, after as soon as he gets a little more uh, grown. So with all that out of the way, let's roll that intro and let's get to upgrading this Quince Monitor's enclosure. Stick around. Alright, so here we are. Um, unfortunately, we have to put the grow tent in here just temporarily because uh, my hot water heater tank broke. Uh, yeah, so the reptile room is pretty flooded. And actually, where this tent was originally, it was like right behind or right by, beside the, the uh, water tank heater. So uh, pretty much the, my whole reptile room, laundry room was flooded. Uh, not looking forward to seeing the uh, future damage of water damage into the flooring and walls is going to look like. But for now, this enclosure is going to be right here. And then later on, once we replace the heater, we're going to move it back into the reptile room. First thing on this list is actually uh, cleaning it out. Uh, for Unfortunately, this was the old, uh, <laughs> this was the old mountain dra horn dragon uh, enclosure for that trio. However, you know, it started looking from what was like this, this beautiful setup, uh, to now looking like this. Gross. So I ended up, I moved out the mountain horn dragons that just, I don't just, I don't know, the enclosure just didn't take, so just gonna end up redoing the entire thing. Um, it smells kind of bad too, so we're gonna give this thing a, a deep clean. I'm gonna take out all the substrate, move everything, disinfect the sticks, uh, disinfect the walls, the floor, everything. Oh look, there's a super worm beetle. Man, he's had a pretty spacious enclosure. So yeah, we're just gonna start out cleaning everything, disinfecting everything, and then putting some new substrate, some new sticks, uh, a large water area. I got this great one that I think he's really gonna enjoy. And that's about it, so uh, let's do a montage video. Got all that stuff out, now we just need to change the substrate and then add some fresh substrate in. All right, I skipped some of the parts because uh, some of them were just boring, I don't know. I don't need to keep them in there. But moving on, we have the new water bowl. This is a nice, let's see here, it's a 15 by 19, or no, 15 by 20 by uh, eight inch, so. Pretty nice water dub, especially a big improvement for what his water dish was before. Before he's able to swim a lot, even dive in a little deeper this time. Um, of course, throughout time, we'll be getting some more upgrades as the upgrade enclosures go. But this can suffice for now while he's still a juvenile.
hot, so I took my hat off and put my hair up, but we are almost finished now. Just kind of did the boring stuff. I uh, didn't really put too much on the film, like, you know, changing out the substrate, cleaning it, and then um, if, or installing the uh, heat light. It just kind of seemed kind of boring, I don't know. Kind of, it, a little tedious, I just didn't add it. But we are just about finished. Now really all that's left is to turn the lights on, fill the water feature, and then give it a good misting. Then we're gonna get that quince miner out and talk a little bit about him. Here you have it, the new upgraded enclosure for the quince monitor. Um, it's kind of bare bones right now. I think there's definitely a couple things I want to add. As soon as you see this larger, I want to add a bamboo fence around the walls. Unfortunately, I can't do it now at its current size because, of course, he is still small enough to bridge in between the gap of the actual grow tent wall itself and the bamboo wall would be. And that's kind of no fun getting him out of in between a wall and a bamboo fence. <laughs> also thinking I'm probably do this like within a week or two, uh, just grab some potted plants to hang out, maybe some pothos, a nice spider plant over here, just to give him some more of that arboreal room that's up there because he really has two points at this point. Uh, maybe also go foraging from some more branches, kind of max this out where he can use or utilize all five feet of the height that there is. But for right now, I think it's a pretty big improvement for how his cage was uh, before, that 3x2x3. Three by by three. It definitely has a lot more climbing opportunities, a lot more branches to utilize that is both horizontal and vertical. Uh, definitely a larger water feature. I know he's gonna love that. Of course, Quince Monitor is being semi, both semi-arboreal and also aquatic. Definitely upgrading the water feature and having more height to the enclosure is a plus for that animal. But enough about the enclosure. Let's pull out that Quince Monitor and talk about him a little bit. And here we have him once again, the quince monitor, looking as lovely as ever. Uh, you can see on the tail, he is already going through another shed. I feel like this guy is shedding just 24 seven. He's definitely growing out like a weed ever since he got accustomed to the food and actually eating. Uh, it was a little bit of a tricky uh, scenario getting him to eat in the very beginning, but after I believe like a week or two, he started chowing down some um, food. Uh, right now he's eating a diet of some chicken, whole chicken, or chicken thighs, sorry. So chicken thighs, a uh, couple different types of fish, um, some turkey, some eggs, and then rarely some crickets. Uh, he seems to enjoy the fish the most out of everything, so I do try to feed him I'm a little more of the healthier options as far as fish species go, but he's looking great. So far, not much of an insect feeder. Um, try dubia supers, uh, black fly soldier larva, uh, some mealworms, crickets, and so far he's just kind of rejected everything. He seems to be uh, more of the picky eater uh, as far as getting more of those lean meats instead of just the insects. Here he's a little stressed. He's getting that tail curled. Not too sure what to make about the situation, so. We won't keep him out too long just because he is a little bit scared. I did have to um, change out the bulbs, so unfortunately he was in the dark for a little 15, 20 minutes, which can be a little, a little bit of a scare. You know, it's knocking off their cycle going, you know, it's morning, then all of a sudden it's night for 20 minutes, uh, and now you're taking me out. So it's a little bit of a stressful situation for, for him, I'm sure. There you go, bud. I know just at any second he is gonna dart away, so I'm having my hands ready for him. But yeah, right now, just because you're not seeing any of that tongue flicking or anything, he's really trying to figure out you know, where he's at. He's a little bit stressed right now. He's getting a little more tense too, so let, let's put him in. You know, I don't wanna keep him out for too long. So real quick, what do you guys think he's going to do first when we put him in? Um, he, he, he's either gonna climb on the branches or duck immediately into the water, especially when he's in the stressed out state. It seems the water is a safe bet for him to go. But all right, little buddy, let's get you into your brand new home and see how you like it. It's like he's 
getting a little taste of everything, kind of taking in that information, seeing what's going on. I have a nice basking platform. I'll probably end up building another platform on here um, in case this one, I feel like this one might hit that basking temp that we need, but mm, just as a double check, you know, I'll make sure in a couple of days that it's not uh, hitting that temperature and I'm just gonna build a platform myself and I add some slate rock up here as a basking platform. But so far so good, you know, at least he didn't try to run away and just dart at the first second. So, I mean, that's a step in the right direction. We're getting some little tumflicks here and there. So you can see he's trying to take in that information and just kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, plus, uh, you know, it is uh, straight in the morning. I believe it's like 10 o'clock over here or something. So really that basking platform's only been on uh, for about an hour in his original enclosure. So he also hasn't had a chance to heat all the way up, you know, get that extra reptile boost uh, for the morning. So he might not be, you know, as alert and energetic as he would be after getting that full bask. Another thing that I really like about this enclosure is the fact that it does have so much height. I feel like with the uh, two foot, three foot by two foot by three foot, uh, I had to really get down really low in order for him to not be afraid of me because, you know, anything towering over an animal is going to make them frightened. But this one having five feet of height, I can kneel down at this level. And even on his basking platform, he's still higher than me, which I think will give him a boost of confidence and to help not be so afraid. All right, I think we're just gonna leave him be, get him adjusted to his new enclosure. I'll do an update on him in a little bit once he starts settling down and really uh, checking out the full enclosure. That uh, should be a little bit better content than of course him just standing still trying to, uh, just wishing that I would go away. Real quick before we finish up this video, I do have a big announcement and uh, well, let's just get into it. Before we wrap this video up, I just want to make a big announcement, and that is the fact that in this box right here, we have a new monitor lizard. Now, I think I'm gonna keep this one a surprise until next week's video. Um, you know, just add a little suspense to it, but we do have a new monitor lizard. It is more of the bigger kind of monitors, and it's one that I have been wanting for quite a while now, and I'm very, very excited to be taking this guy out. So let's do a little poll in the comment section. Uh, drop a comment in what monitor lizard you think it is, and I'll tell you guys if you are right or wrong. And if you guys just cannot wait for next week, you gotta know what monitor lizard it is right now. Well, I have some good news for you. You can sign up to my Patreon today for as little as one dollar. Hey guys, Eddie from Dakota back here again. Um, I have no idea what went on with the audio system. It only happened for two takes and then the rest of the audio was fine. I filmed the video right after this one and the audio was fine, so no idea what happened with that. Uh, pretty much it was just stating that if you want to know the new animals for anyone else, get some dibs on one of the animals I produce, things like that, make sure to go to patreon.com slash gbcbexotics, links down in the description. That's about it. It gets a little better from here on out. Thanks free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DBCB Exotics, where we're also on TikTok. Like some cool merch like this shirt right here, or maybe you like these designs over here and over here. Check us out at teespring.com slash DBCB Exotics. I'll link the merch link in the description. Other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.